In my opinion, there's only a few must-have mods for your project car. One of them being gauges for your interior. Of course, there's many types of gauges, but in today's video, we're, we're going to be going over the gauges that I run in my personal 2006 WRX build, why I run them, why they're important, and also you'll notice I have these three gauges currently set up on my A-pillar, but we're actually installing a new setup, which is actually going to replace that A-pillar setup. I think it's going to clean up the interior a lot. I think it's going to make the interior look amazing. Gauges make the interior of your car feel like a race car, and well, that's always a plus. So anytime you're working with wiring, obviously it's always a good idea to unplug the battery just to be safe. Just some pretty basic tools that I had to use today. Those little Wago connectors really did come in handy also. Only two screws holding this thing in and it really just popped right out. This I actually had to end up cutting some of the wires because of the poor wiring job I did before. So we got that rewired in just a little bit. All right, so we are definitely making some really good progress on taking out the A-pillar gauge set. Got that fully taken out. I'm just gonna rewire this entire thing. I did it previously in a way that I was not happy with. Literally just kept tapping into like certain powers. So I'm gonna redo the whole thing. I have these special type of clamps. I'm gonna, I'll pop up the name once I find the name of the clamp, but pretty much you could put in one and then attach three and it combines like pretty much all four together. It's pretty badass. So I'm gonna rewire the entire thing. Um, so the three gauges that I personally run are oil pressure, AFR or wideband, and also boost. And it also reads vacuum, obviously. So the one that I'm actually not going to run right now, primarily it is for aesthetic reasons. I will eventually run it again. Obviously we're going from a three uh, gauge setup to a two gauge setup. And I think these ones look best because they are the most similar. And that is my wide band that I'm gonna have towards the center. And then obviously my vacuum slash boost gauge. They look very similar. I like how they look a lot. My one oil pressure gauge is actually a pro sport gauge. Looks very different. I actually do want to get a different one. And where I'm actually going to put that, they have vents that you can either put, uh, they have like a vent gauge holder. I'm gonna look into one that I actually want. I'm either gonna put that, the oil pressure right here, or I'm going to put it over here because I actually got, oh, you can see my freaking wire mess right there. I actually got a different access port holder. It was literally 10 bucks, super legit. You just 3M adhesive it to this side. You could find it on like Rally Sport or uh, really anything. Cobb offers it. So it literally just snaps on the access port and go right there. And you can aim it up towards you. And I also have my wire for the access port. Uh, fish through right here. So whenever I need to plug it in check things out change up the tune that guy is all set right there So what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna clean up all these all this wiring um, I actually needed to take this little piece on top out because that is where I ran my uh, my uh, Power and ground from the clock over to here. So now I'm gonna rerun it Obviously, I'm going to have the wires come from the clock and I'm gonna take out uh, the bolts that hold in the cluster right here. I'm actually gonna tuck all the wires right behind here. It's gonna be nice and clean uh, just to feed the power and ground to my new setup, which is gonna be these two right here. After a whole bunch of absolute nonsense, this is way cleaner than it actually was before. I think there's a called Waco. Dad, is it Waco? The connectors? No, Waco. 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 Yeah, Waco. Waco is that place in Texas. Okay. Waco connectors. I finally. Uh, I'm telling you, this is way more organized than you would think. I got the ground labeled. This is all coming from the clock up there. I got ground, I got my switch 12, and I also have the illumination. So when you turn on the headlights, you notice the clock dims. Also the headlights turn on and the gauges will dim as well. So I got all those hooked up. Um, obviously I already have those wires ran for like my wideband and all that coming up from right there. So 
Originally, all the wires were coming up here for the for the triple gauge pod, but now I ran all those wires coming down here. I got all my connections. If I want to add any more gauges, I got a couple more spots, so that's why I used a little bit more for the Wago connectors. But I should be able to turn the key right now, and they should all illuminate. Um, I obviously want to make sure it turns on before I tuck everything away. Obviously, very important. So I did have the battery disconnected the entire time as I was working with all these wires. Uh, but now that everything is connected up, we should be good to go. We'll see how it goes. All right, we should get a little bit. I know this does look awful with all these cables, but we got one. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Do we have two? Let's go, baby. We got the one right there. And we got this gauge popped up and I don't know why they're wrong. He pulled up on me as I literally just finished the gauge install. Looks great. Looks great. Way more REM plus, huh? Mm -hmm. Literally, so obviously this is back to stock instead of having the gauges all right here. We only have two of them, the oil pressure. I was trying to say, I think I might put the oil pressure right here, but now we got uh, the AFR on this side, and then we got the boost and vacuum on that side, and then looking from Right there. It's like I'm playing freaking Forza Horizon. Or something. Woo -woo. And obviously, I already showed you guys the access ports on a nice little swivel. I could take it off super easily, put it on. So I'm pretty hyped on it. So look at this. It's all blown out. Because oh, okay. I cut this originally because obviously I had my I used to have my access port in the center, but then I got kind of over it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I was like, damn, like I need to find a new one of these. And then I remembered they obviously sell. Uh, for the gauge pod, it's all all in one, just bolts right up. It's brand new, not cut in the middle anymore. And then obviously the gauges can be there now, so worked out perfect. I almost left you guys hanging. Obviously, the best part of this is gonna see the gauges turn on. So, sheesh, we better. Yeah, at nighttime, honestly, it's gonna be like freaking super, super sick. But the battery voltage is blown out. That thing says battery, it's not getting even voltage. That's why this thing's freaking sitting in the car. But, uh, you know, we just. Don't even worry about that. I just do still need to get a new battery because that one is officially dead. So I almost forgot the entire point of this video. I wanted to tell you guys why I think it's very important to have gauges inside of your car. Number one, I think a lot of people put gauges just because they look cool. Don't get me wrong. They definitely look cool. And that's a huge bonus on having the gauges. But I'm going to tell you guys what these gauges actually mean and where they should be. So we can start it out with the air fuel ratio gauge. Why it's good to have a, a live readout on that is you could di diagnose your car on the fly while it's running. So at idle, for example, that number should be reading out about 14.7 to one. That's what it is, air to fuel ratio. When you're on the gas, I believe it shouldn't get any more rich than about 10 to 11. Obviously when you're really hard on the gas, it's gonna get a little bit more rich. Uh, that number's going to go down, right? So it's gonna be 11, a 10, 11, maybe 10, but 11-ish is, is a pretty good range. And also when you're cruising on the freeway, it will be about that 14.7 range. Now, moving on to the boost and also a vacuum gauge that I'm running, that at idle should be about 19. 17 to 19 is a good range. Uh, and it also should be static. If that, if that vacuum reading is very sporadic and going up and down, not good. So that is where that should be. And when you let off the gas, you'll have a huge sur uh, surge of vacuum as well. Um, and it should be reading upwards of about like 20, 21. Um, and then obviously boost, that's pretty self-explanatory. Whatever your max boost reading is, that is what the boost gauge is going to read out. Uh, mine personally reads out about, I think it's about 19.3-ish. Uh, that's my max boost that I'm running right now on 91. This is the final result of the new gauges. Definitely comment down below what you guys think. Uh, yes, my battery's freaking dead, so I have that in the car. But anyway, let me know what you guys thought of this video. And if you found this video helpful, definitely make sure you let me know, share with the friend make sure you subscribe to the channel if you found this video helpful i'm gonna catch you guys in the next one peace out i got they don't know i got wheels huh they don't know you got wheels but it's a perfect way to end it uh, I just